I'm Žiga Turk, I come from Slovenia. I'm a professor at the University of Ljubljana. I teach uh, engineering information technology uh, and I also have some experience in uh, politics. I've been a minister in Slovenian government twice, responsible for uh, development, growth and also for education, science, culture, sports, information society. In my view, there are four different patterns of reforms in so-called transition countries. The luckiest were the countries that did um, substantial reforms, deep changes, soon or immediately after the change of the system, that is in the beginning of 1990s, like Poland, like Czech Republic, like Estonia, and so, and so forth. And they have now a long history of reaping those rewards, so their development has been fastest over this uh, period of time. Then you have countries which um, did so um, at some point later. They seized an opportunity. Slovakia comes to mind, Hungary comes to mind, uh, maybe a few other countries. The third model would be the gradualists. Unfortunately, I would put Slovenia um, in that category. It means no decisive reforms, never, but slow and small changes, gradually. Uh, these changes would not be so deep, they would not be so substantive, and the rewards uh, would also not be so uh, major as with some other countries. And then you have countries where there has been almost no reform. Of course, none of this scenario is perfect. You could never say it was exactly this, this one country followed only that scenario. You have elements of, of or, or features of each of the four in each of the countries, but to a varying level of, uh, level of detail. To make reform sustainable means that there should just be enough time for the reforms to show a positive effect. What also helps and what is, I think, the, um, uh, the substance of, of this initiative, uh, which is very positive, is that you have in civil society um, the, those who, who promote reforms, those who are trying to push reforms, those who are motivating uh, the government uh, to do reform, because usually those who oppose reform are already organized. They are reaping the benefits of unreformed system while those who would benefit, and that's the average Ukrainian, the average person, uh, he or she is not organized, and that's why such civil, uh, civil society organizations are so valuable and so worthy of being helped. You know, when you're practically at war, and when your territory is, uh, is, is attacked or is under occupation, um, one would be tempted to say, I mean, national security comes first. National unity, integrity, this, this is something to, to take very strongly. But it, this should not be a pretext to say, oh, we have this bigger problem, which indeed is, is, uh, is hard. Um, we will not do these other things. It is important to do these other things because it makes the country stronger to all kinds of external threats. I think the best general rule of thumb for reforming countries, for making countries more successful, uh, was um, observed by um, Dara Nachemoglu in this book, Why Nations Fail. And he said, nations, nations fail because they have or they are stuck with uh, uh, um, extractive institutions. So you have a whole lot of institutions in a country that extract money out of people, out of economy. So to make sure that these institutions are dismantled, that is, that is number one. If you would ask me about sectorial um, um, priority, then I would say rule of law. Then I would say public sector reform in general. So um, reforming public sector so that it, is per that it perceives itself as a service to the citizen, as a service activity to the citizen, not as someone whom the citizen has to 
pray and ask to do something for him. And then, of course, the economic environment, um, enabling fair, um, fair conditions on the market for companies to compete so that the best are winning. And if the best are winning, this also means good salaries for those who work at best companies, secure working places, it means development, it, it means growth. The EU should be the kind of pillar of normality, a kind of pillar of stability, of a kind of an attraction point which, which gives you both a motivation and an example of what works. And I would be hoping that uh, the policy of the European Union would be such that um, the nearing of Ukraine to European Union would also be a strong motive uh, to do these reforms. Thank you.